Hi everyone, a very good evening and welcome to today's live session. This is Gayatri here. Uh, so as you all know, today we are going to be uh, discussing questions from the reasoning ability section for the SBI mains examination that is coming up. Um, so uh, today also I have chosen a few questions. Um, so uh, see questions chosen for today's session are not from the last week's AIM because last week's AIM was not on the mains examination. So I have chosen uh, other questions, right? Uh, like questions from generally, if you see mains examination for SBI, you have a lot of arrangements, puzzles, right? These are the kind of questions that you can expect. So I have chosen a few questions of these type, a few questions from coded inequalities. Uh, all that we will be looking into today in today's session. Then again, uh, data sufficiency. These are the common topics that you can expect in the mains exam. All right. So let's get started. So let us look at the first question for today's session. Let me share my screen. The first question for the session is there on your screen. Study the uh, information given below and answer the questions that follow. Seven friends P, B, R, T, Q, N and G are studying different specializations, IT, Civil, HR, Marketing, Finance, Journalism and Pharmacy, not necessarily in the same order. Okay, so there are seven friends with different specializations. They are taking an entrance examination and there are three test series three sets of uh, exams that happen and each of them like different colors red blue green yellow pink orange and gray so based on that some information is given you have to solve and get the correct arrangement so try this take the uh, next one or two minutes let me know once you are done and then we'll start solving it so let's get started so I hope I have taken the next screen. I hope all of you can see the screen. So what is given here? Seven friends P, B, R, T, Q, N and G are studying in seven different specializations. IT, Civil, HR, Marketing, Finance, Journalism phar and Pharmacy. Not necessarily in the same order. They, they came for common entrance for higher education. The test has a series of three sets. Each one of them have a liking for a different color as given below okay they take a series of three tests uh, three of them are girls now g specialization is pharmacy so uh, right now i am just uh, writing down the given information as i read okay so what is given here g specialization is pharmacy g specialization is pharmacy and then it is given that p likes yellow color so p likes yellow color and it is given P does not like IT or HR. The one who studies civil likes gray color and is a girl. So the one who uh, studies civil, so the one who studies civil likes gray color and this person is a girl. Okay, then um, so we have started from here. I am just uh, for your convenience I am just underlining whichever part we have used civil gray color as a girl Q who is the sister of N studies marketing and likes pink color so Q likes marketing and pink color now it is also given that Q is the sister of N so obviously Q is also a girl okay so Q studies marketing likes pink color T does not like red color okay let that be there n the wife of r studies hr and likes green so n studies hr likes green so what is given n is the wife of r who studies hr and likes green again wife of r means again n is also a female so these are the three females in the group so all these are going to be male or boys yeah male male female then n is the wife of r who studies HR and likes green. B likes grey. So already I hear grey is here. So B likes grey. This is B. Then it is given R likes orange. So R likes orange. B likes grey and R likes orange. The one who likes blue studies finance. So whoever likes blue, that person is studying finance correct it can be here only right yes the one who likes blue studies finance if you look at the people right i have g p b q n r and which is the only person i am left with now the only person that i am left with now is t so this has to be t so again this is a boy, person is boy 
boy again if you look at colors i have already filled blue orange green pink gray yellow and so what should this be this has to be um what is the one left red so this has to be red then here if you look at this person p i know this person cannot be it or hr so obviously this has to be it and this has to be journalism right this is journalism now this part is done seems to be a very easy thing right the most important the remaining part is also there with this the question is not over right so you have to look at the remaining part as well see if you if in the examination right if the questions now if i just go to the next page right see these are the questions that have been asked from this set so if you see the questions right all the three questions are mainly considering the rank of these people so if the sub questions from the main question right if from a particular set if the sub questions were from this part of the question right then it is very very easy to answer right i am sure you can even stop with this part try to answer as many questions as possible but if you see in this particular question the sub the questions that are followed correct from this particular set that is given are all based on the ranking so we have to find out this ranking as well which is very very important so now let's try to solve this part now what is given to us let us look at that okay and it is given no two friends get the same rank okay so there are how many people are there there are totally seven people who are writing different sets of examination and it is given no two friends get the same mark so basically each person who is writing the examination is going to have different ranks so i am just going to write that down here 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 seven ranks are there okay i'm just drawing it like this because i have less space and i don't want uh, the way i write no that you have any confusion okay now what is given r never scored the highest marks okay and there are how many sets of papers are there there are three sets of papers set 1 set 2 and set 3 now uh, what is given r never scored the highest marks p scores the lowest marks in two tests r always scores more than n and n always scores more than p also no two of them are in consecutive positions g always remain in the bottom three ranks but in a progressive manner so if i say there is a set 1 there are three sets of papers right set 1 set 2 and set 3 okay now if you look at the last sentence what is given here g always remains in the bottom three ranks but in a progressive manner that means bottom three ranks means 7 6 5 5 right in each test right there are three sets of tests in each test according to the uh, marks that each person is scoring you can allot a rank to them right in set 1 might be p is scoring the highest right so rank 1 for p might be g is scoring lowest so rank 7 for g right that's what i'm trying to write here it is given here that g always remains in the bottom three ranks so g has to be in rank 5 6 and 7 always 5 or 6 or 7 and it is given in the bottom three ranks in a progressive manner that means progressive mean in an increasing order okay that means if g is scoring seventh rank in set 1 in the set 2 g will be in the sixth rank in set 3 g will be in the fifth rank that is a progressive manner right progressively g is increasing the rank of g is increasing so g is coming here here and here so i can fix the position of g in the three sets now next information that they have said is p scores the lowest marks in two tests so in set 1 already i know g has scored the lowest so in set 2 and set 3 who has to score the lowest p obviously has to score the lowest okay then what is given r never scored the highest marks and r always score more than n and n always scores more than p also no two of them are in consecutive positions so basically what they have given us r scores more than n scores more than p but when you arrange them like this right see for example if this is r then this cannot be n because they cannot be in consecutive positions that is what they are saying similarly n and p cannot be together like this consecutive positions it cannot be so what is the possibility where can r n and p be in set when you consider set 1 see i know r cannot be in position 1 because it is very clearly given that r has never scored the highest marks so r is here correct r can be here i am not saying r is here r 
can be here r cannot be in rank 1 so if r is here then which can be an n cannot come here right n cannot come in rank 3 so n can be here so if this is n this is the only place where i can place p so in case of set 1 the only place where i can keep r n and p is like this right r can only be in position 2 I know where else I can't keep R here or here or here anywhere because R is greater than N is greater than P and it is also given they are not in the consecutive positions. So if this is R this can be N and this can be P correct. Now uh, so this is the case of set 1. Now let us look at set 2. If you consider set 2 again the same thing has to uh, we have to try to apply right if you look at set 2 okay instead of set 2 let us look at set 3 first. Okay, if you are looking at set 3, where will R, N and P be again? This has to be R and this has to be N. Why do I say that? See, for example, if I consider this as R, okay, in set 3, if I consider R to be in rank 3, where can I place N? I can't place N anywhere. And if N comes here, then R and N will be adjacent. If N comes here, then R and uh, N and P will be adjacent. So, this is not possible. The only place, again, where I can keep R is here. So, this can be R and this can be N. Okay, uh, this is the, sorry, this is the case with set 3. Now, let us try to fix set 2. Now, in set 2, there are, mo there are more possibilities. How does that happen? See, first possibility is this is R. Okay, possibility 1 for set 2. This can be R and this can be N. Now, there is another possibility for set 2. What is the other possibility? I am writing down all the possibilities that can happen for set 2 because there is more than one possibility here right what is the other possibility so this is p this is g in set 2 and uh, again your r and n can be like this right r can be here n can be here that is another possibility again it is satisfying all the conditions there can be one more possibility in set 2 what is that i know this is p and this is g so again uh, here first i put r here n here or R can be here and N can be here also. So, there are basically three cases for this set 2, right? See, when you look at the marks scored by students in set 2, you have three possibilities. If you look at set 1, there is only one possibility that can come. If you look at set 3, there is only one possibility that can come. But if you look at set 2, right, you can have three possibilities that can come. Right, two possibilities is where R is in the rank 2 and one possibility where R is in the rank 3. So, accordingly you can place N in two different places here and N will come here. So, these are the various possibilities of ranks that we can have and this is the only information that is given to us, right? Ranking of others is not given. So, what is given? Let us just uh, read what is given here. R never scored the highest marks. Yes, that is satisfied. P scores the lowest marks in two sets. Yes. R always scores more than N and N always scores more than P. Also, no two of them are in consecutive. So, now we have completed our arrangement. Now, let us look at the questions that follow. So, I hope it is clear. See, for set 1, there is only one uh, possibility. For set 3 also, there is only one possibility of a ranking that can happen. But if you look at set 2, there are more possibilities. It's actually not difficult, right? So, uh, if you see, uh, like, I, I'm sure a lot of you were stuck while solving it. But if you understand, right, now that you have understood what is given, it was actually easy. Only thing that you have to do is, see, in the examination, what will happen is when the set 2 comes and when you see there are so many possibilities that can happen, you will suddenly feel the question is difficult where actually it is not. It's okay to spend some time and write down the possibilities and see. Once you write it down, it's very easy. Okay, now let's look at the questions. Now, what is the first question? If B and T are in consecutive positions, which of the following cannot be true? So, what is given if B and T are in consecutive positions? Okay, let us take option by option, right? That will be easy. B scores the highest marks. That is the first option. If B and T are in consecutive positions, okay, for set 1, can B and T be in consecutive positions? No. Correct? Uh, for set 2, again here in this case, B and T cannot be in consecutive position. Again in this case also, B and T cannot be in consecutive position. Here, B and T can be in consecutive positions, right? So, 
according to the first question, they are saying that B and T should be in consecutive position. So, if this was the case of set 2, this can be B or T. Similarly, this can be B or T, right? Vice versa. If this is B, this is T. Um, if this is B, this is T, right? Again, here also, if this was B, this can be T. If this was T, this can be B. Vice versa, right? These are possibilities. So, what is the question? If B and T are in consecutive position, which of the following cannot be true? So, B scores highest mark. Yes, that can be true. See, it is not that B will always score the high marks. It is just uh, said that B can score highest marks, right? See, B can come here and T can come here. It's a possibility. I cannot say that it is definitely something that is false. So, this is not the answer that we are looking for. Next one. G scores the lowest marks. So, when does G score the lowest marks? G will score the lowest marks only in set 1. And when set 1 happens, can B and T be in consecutive positions? No, they can never be in consecutive positions. So, this is the answer that we are looking for. So, when B and T come in consecutive positions, for sure G can never be in the lowest. Because only in set 2, correct? This case happens and in that case P is going to be the lowest. So, what will be your answer here? G scores the lowest marks. Option B will be your answer. T scores the highest marks. Yes, that is possible, right? We just found out either T can score the highest marks or B can score the highest marks in set 2. So, that is also not the correct answer. P scores the lowest mark. That's also true. We just discussed that, right? So, obviously, your correct answer option is going to be option B. G scores the lowest marks. Next one. If G and N are not in consecutive positions and T scores the highest mark, which of the following must be true? So, what is given here? If G and N are not in consecutive positions and T scores the highest marks, which of the following must be true? So, let us try that out. Let me just erase whatever we wrote for the previous. If G and N are not in consecutive position and T is scoring the highest. So, T is scoring highest, G and N are not in consecutive positions, G and N are not in consecutive position, T is scoring highest. But here, G and N are in consecutive positions, right? Here, in these two cases also, G and N are in consecutive positions. So, we should consider these two cases, okay? If G and N are not in consecutive positions and T scores the highest marks, which of the following must be true? T and Q are in alternate position in terms of rank. T and Q are in alternate position in terms of rank. So, see, Q can be here, Q can be here, right? Or Q can be here or Q can be here. Now, can I say T and Q, If see, if I know for sure that Q was here, right? Then I can say T and Q are in alternate position, which necessarily needn't be True, it's a possibility, right? Q can come here or Q can come here, but I cannot say for sure that Q will come only here. So, I cannot say this is the correct answer, right? T and Q are in alternate positions in terms of rank. No, it is necessarily, it needn't be true necessarily. Okay, next one. P and Q are in alternate positions in terms of rank. P and Q. So, which are the two cases that we are looking for? Set 1 and this set 2. So, P and Q are in alternate positions in terms of rank. Again, this can be Q or this can be Q. So, they did not be in alternate position. Similarly, if you look at set 2, right, this can be Q. In this case, it is an alternate position, but Q can come here also. There is no other uh, criteria that is given. So, again, for sure, we cannot say P and Q will always be in alternate positions. So, not true. G gets lowest marks. Again, that is not possible. In set 1, G is getting lowest mark. But in set 2, G is not getting lowest marks. N lies exactly between B and Q in terms of rank. So, see, you have filled so much, right? Only two places are remaining. This place will either be B or Q. This place will also be either B or Q. Vice versa, right? If this is B, this is Q. If this is B, this is Q. Similarly, B and Q will be filled in these two places in this set also. So, one thing that you can say is that when T is in the topmost rank, right? When T is T scores the highest marks and G and N are not in consecutive positions, I can say for sure that N will come in between B and Q, right? That is for sure. That is this option. N lies exactly between B and Q in terms of rank. So, what is your correct answer? Your correct answer is 
option D. Next one. If Q secures the same rank in all the three cases but does not score the highest marks, what is his rank? So in all the three cases, Q is uh, securing the same rank. So what is that possibility? And it is also given Q is not scoring the highest. Okay. So where can Q come? So I have to find a place where, which is vacant for in set 1, set 2 and set 3. All three of them together. So if you see the top post is vacant, right? In set 2 also all, for all the various cases it is vacant, all various possibilities it is vacant. But it is very clearly given that Q cannot have the top rank. So the only place where I have space to fit Q will be here. Correct? Because this at rank 3, set 1 also there is a vacant space, set 3 also there is a vacant space and there is a possibility in set 2 as well. So the only rank that will fit for Q in this case is third rank. That is option A. Is it clear? If Q secures the same rank in all the three cases. See, if I say Q is securing fifth rank. Now, I am considering going by set 1. Okay, if I am considering that Q is getting fifth rank, then in set 2 also Q can get fifth rank. Here, right, for this one. But can Q get uh, fifth rank in set 3? No, because this place is already filled. That is how you have to look at. Okay, so... The only place where there is a vacant space in all the three sets, right? In set 2, this is a definite possibility. Set 1 and set 3, there is a vacant space here. So, it has to be third rank code. So, Neha is asking me, ma'am, uh, will such tough questions come in SBI PO mains examination? You never know, Neha. Sometimes the paper is easy. Sometimes it is difficult. But always hope for the best and expect the worst. Okay, so uh, you have to prepare for the worst. Okay, let's put it that way. Prepare for the worst and expect the best. Okay, okay. Next one. If, next question from the same set. If sister of Q ranks fifth in the test and persons who like blue and pink come alternatively, alternately, then which of the following can be true? Okay, again, we, have, we need to go back to this uh, so, what is given in the question? If sister of Q ranks fifth in test and person who likes blue and pink. So, first let us just write down that. Who likes blue? T likes blue. Who likes pink? Pink is liked by Q. Right? So, N is in the, who is the sister of Q? N is the sister of Q. Right? So, N is in the fifth position and T and Q are coming alternately. So, which is that case? Look for that. Here it is given, no, Q is the sister of N and N is also a female. So, obviously, N is coming in fifth position here, right? In these two cases, N is coming in the fifth position, fifth position. And it is said that Q and T should be in alternate position. So, where can Q and T be? Q, T can be here, correct? Similarly, if this was the case, Q, T will come here. Now, let us look at the options given. What is the first option say? G stands on 4th rank. See for sure you know G cannot be in the 4th rank. Why? Because G obviously can be in 5, 6 or 7 ranks. That you know for sure. Last 3 ranks only G will come. Okay. Next. The person in finance department scores the highest marks. Is that possible? Who is the person in the finance department? Uh, person in finance department is T. Yes, T can score the highest marks for sure, right? That is a possibility. So, that can be true. So, option B can be true. Sister of N scores the highest marks. Who is the sister of N? Q is the sister of N. Q can score the highest marks. So, that is also possible. So, what will be your answer here? Both these two seem to be true. So, your answer will be both B and C. Is it clear? Next, what is the rank of Q's brother-in-law if N, G and P uh, rank consecutively? What is the rank of Q's brother-in-law? Again, who is Q's brother-in-law that we have to find out, no? See, Q uh, has a sister. Q and N are siblings and uh, it was given uh, N is the wife of R. So, who is Q's brother-in-law? Q's brother-in-law is R. Okay, so Q's brother-in-law is R and what is the question here? What is the rank of Q's brother-in-law? If N, G and P rank consecutively. So if N, G and P, where is N, G and P ranking consecutively? 
एनजी एंड पी आर रैंकिंग कॉन्सिक्यूटिवली इन टू पॉसिबिलिटीज राइट एन जी पी इज कमिंग हियर टूगेदर एन जी पी इज कमिंग हियर टूगेदर सो दीज आर द टू केसेज वेयर एन जी एंड पी आर रैंकिंग कॉन्सिक्यूटिवली इन दीज टू केसेज वेयर इज द रैंक ऑफ आर इट इज ईदर हियर और हियर सो ईदर टू और सो वॉट विल बी योर आंसर इट हैज टू बी कॉन्ट बी डिटर्माइंड बिकॉज इट इज ईदर सेकेंड और थर्ड राइट इन वन केस आर वॉज इन द सेकेंड रैंक ओके इन वन केस आर वॉज इन द थर्ड रैंक सो यू विल गो विथ कॉन्ट बी डिटर्माइंड और देर शुड बीन ऑन ऑप्शन विच ए सेकेंड और थर्ड दे हैव मेड यूज ऑफ द रिलेशन इन वन और वन और टू क्वेश्चन सो यू के नॉट से दैट इट वॉज रिडंडंट और नॉट रिक्वायर्ड दैट इज ऑल्सो रिक्वायर्ड सो आई होप दिस सेट इज क्लियर नाउ लेट्स मूव ऑन टू द नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन so try this this is an easy one right this is a question on data sufficiency so what is asked here is what is dream coded as that's what you have to find out and you have been given three uh, statements see which of the statement is enough to arrive at the answer never give up your dream means as follows and chase your dreams this now using the first statement alone uh, can i find out what is the code for dream i cannot because here your dream is covered in both the sentences right so i cannot say what is the code for dream exactly using the first statement alone so the first statement alone is not enough to arrive at the answer is the first statement alone enough see if i find out also i have which is the common ones here you have ku and ko now out of this ku ko which is the one for dream i don't know so using the first statement alone i am not able to arrive at the answer now look at the second statement if you look at the second statement i have to find the code for a dream again the word dream is not even there in the first part in this sentence and the word dream is here in this sentence but again i don't know uh, which is the code for dream right you see second statement alone also i cannot arrive at the answer now let me look at the third statement alone again if i look at the third statement alone in the first sentence here the word dream is not there here dream is there but again i cannot say what is the code so using the third statement alone also i cannot arrive at the answer now let me try to combine statement 1 and 2 and see if i am able to get the answer so if i combine statement 1 and 2 okay will i get the answer see i can i can check with these two right again give chance to your dream never give up your dream this your dream is common in both similarly here also your dream is common in both so again separately the code for dream i cannot find out so combining 1 and 2 i cannot get the answer now let me combine 2 and 3 if i combine 2 and 3 what will i get give chance to your dream is coded as follows give chance to your dream dream always comes true so if i combine 2 and 3 do i get the answer if you look at the code here you have now uh, to uh, if you combine 2 uh, and 3 are you not getting the answer see give chance to your dream dream always comes true so here um, uh, among these two sentences right give chance to your dream and dream always comes true there is only one thing that is common yeah actually 2 and 3 you are getting the answer but look at the options that is given is that there in the option see here it is given statement 1 alone is sufficient to arrive at the answer statement 2 alone statement uh, 3 alone or statement 2 alone statement 1 and 3 statement 1 and 2 but this option is not even given actually if you see statement using if you combine statement 2 and 3 you are getting the code for dream but that is not given in the options right this actually comes true but not given in the options so if you go by options i know this is not my answer i know this is not my answer if either uh, data in statement 2 alone or statement 1 alone this is also not the answer see as soon as i check these three right 1 alone 2 alone and 3 alone these i can eliminate i just have to check these two options okay so check 1 and 3 and 1 and 2 so 1 and 3 also has gone wrong for me so obviously this has to be the answer okay so what is given here never give up your dream uh, this is statement 1 and statement 3 says dream always come you can check both of that and find out what is the code for so 1 and 3 will be your answer correct answer okay so remember uh, when such questions come check the options as well so that will help you arrive at the answer faster see even though 2 and 3 comes as correct here it is not given as part of the options 
right so that is why we go go with one and three and as soon as you check one alone two alone and three alone you can eliminate three options automatically then you are left with only two options you can ch just check these two and see which is correct okay yeah yes two and three is also possible but it is not part of the option yes so what will be your answer your answer will be only one and three together that is option d next one okay now let's look at the next one so next one of you asked me for a puzzle right so let's try out a puzzle now six games squash badminton table tennis chess carom and billiards are packed and then stacked in six boxes numbered one to six from bottom to top not necessarily in the same order the boxes are covered in different colored covers pink yellow blue red green and white and some information is given those of you who are still trying you can look at this slide and continue solving if you any of you have done uh, please do let me know and then i will start solving it see in such questions please write down the possible cases in many uh, questions there will be more than one possible case you have to write it down and then only you will be able to arrive at the answer so what is given here six games squash badminton table tennis chess carom and billiards are packed and then stacked in six boxes numbered one to six from bottom to top not necessarily in the same order so the boxes are numbered 1 4 5 and 6 okay from bottom to top the boxes are covered in different colors pink yellow blue green red and white the top most box is covered in blue color paper so the top most box is covered in blue color paper then three games are arranged between billiards at the game that is covered with white colored paper so you have lot of possibilities here right uh, so uh, if you see three games are arranged between billiards at the game that is covered with white colored paper so one possibility is billiards can be here correct this can be billiards right if this is billiards then uh, which can be white 1 2 3 this can be white correct this is one possibility now another possibility is this is blue i already know this can be billiards right this can be billiards if this is billiards which is white 1 2 3 this will be white that is the first box will be white yeah there are three spaces in between or it can be the other way around also correct the one at the bottom right this can be billiards that is what can be billiards in that case five will be white so this is another possibility so these are the various possibilities okay at this point itself i am writing that what is given uh, three games are arranged between billiard and that is which is white so if this is billiards this is white the other way around is not possible because already blue is here so white can't come here and billiards can't go there so there is only one possibility here in this case if billiards can either be in position 5 or it can be in position 1 vice versa right i have written that so these are the three cases now badminton and chess are kept in consecutive boxes okay uh, so let me wait to uh, keep that so this i have written this i have done then next what is given let us look at this the box that is covered with yellow cover and the box that has chess has three boxes in between them so again if this is your case right if this is your case where can this come the box that is covered with yellow cover and the box with chess has three boxes in between so either this has to be yellow okay and 1 2 3 this has to be chess now if this is the case right If what is given badminton and chess are kept in consecutive boxes so if this is chess this has to be badminton if this is badminton it is also given badminton is not covered with white paper so this cannot be badminton so this case is wrong see i cannot place yellow here and chess here why because if i place them like that then this has to be badminton as per this sentence that is given which is not possible here so this possibility goes wrong now what is the other possibility this has to be yellow right this can be yellow and this can be 
chess. So, if this is chess, which will be badminton, this will be badminton, right? So, this is yellow, white, badminton, chess, and then it is given carom is wrapped in green cover. So, uh, this is carom, this has to be green, that is the only place where I can keep that, and then. Uh, Badminton is not covered with white. Uh, not more than two games are stacked about table tennis. Again, where will I keep table tennis? See, already here I have put billiards, chess and badminton. Table tennis should have been somewhere here, right? It is very clearly given not more than two games are stacked about table tennis. So, this is wrong. This possibility itself is going wrong. Now, let us try out the next possibility, okay? Now, next possibility, what is given? This is blue this is billiards and this is white now if this is the case uh, where can be uh, chess see can chess come here chess cannot come here if chess comes here then this has to be badminton which is not possible so chess obviously can't be here so the other possibility is this billiards right this can be yellow this billiards can be yellow and if this is yellow see this is the one i am trying to fix now if this is yellow then which can be chess this can be chess if this is chess then this can be badminton okay now if this is badminton then uh, not more than two uh, games are stacked about table tennis then it is given the red colored box is kept just above the pink colored box so where will red and pink come and uh, squash is not packed in the pink cover so the red colored box, see red and pink should be adjacent to each other, right? So, where can it come? See, if I put red and pink here, whichever way, I can't do it because I already know carom is green, correct? So, red and pink have to be adjacent means one of that has to be badminton, right? Which has to be badminton? It is given that the red color is kept above the pink. So, this has to be pink and this has to be red. Then only this can be green and this is carom. Right? There is no other way in which I can keep it. I understand? Because if I keep red and pink here, then this has to be green. Or where will I place carom? Carom has to be green. So, this is where I can place carom. This is pink. Uh, then what is left? Badminton is not covered with white paper is satisfied. Not more than two games are stacked above table tennis. So, which has to be table tennis? This can be table tennis. Correct? It can be the topmost one. Then red covered box is kept above the pink covered box. Squash is not pick, packed in pink cover. So, here according to this case, squash is red. So, this seems to be your correct arrangement. This obviously has to go wrong then. We can check that also why it is going wrong. But this seems to be your correct arrangement because this seems to satisfy everything. Okay. Now, if this was the case, would you want, let's try it out also so that you guys are clear. So, <coughs> this is white and uh, this is billiards. Now, the next thing that we have to place is uh, uh, chess and yellow. Correct. So, in this case, where will yellow come and where will chess come? So, this can be yellow right according to this this can be yellow and this can be chess okay what will happen if uh, this is yellow there is also one more possibility this can be chess right this can be chess and yellow can be here also but let us try this first so if this is the possibility then what happens uh, if this is chess right uh, adjacent to chess has to be badminton correct and uh, i can't put badminton here because tt uh, TT also has to be uh, satisfied, right? So, if I put badminton here, then uh, this can be TT and this is one possibility that I am writing. This can be badminton and this can be TT. So, we are left with carom and pink and red. Now, how do I fix that? The red colored box is kept, uh, badminton and chess are kept in consecutive boxes. Uh, carom is wrapped in green color. So, this has to be carom and green, right? Uh, so, this has to be red and this will be, pink will be here. Now, in this case, this will become what? This will become squash, which is not possible. So, again, in this case, there might be one or two uh, more cases, but all that will anyway go wrong, right? So, obviously, this is going to go wrong. Yeah, so this is anyway at this point itself we have got the answer. So in the examination also if you get the answer at this point move on to the next question. Don't waste your time trying out other possibilities. I am just doing it in the class. So I just tried out to show that obviously this will go wrong.
all of you got it see at this point like i said there could be one more possibility i placed chess here chess could also be here right in this case chess can be here yellow can be here again that will give rise to another possibility which will also go wrong okay yeah so this is going to be your correct answer or did all of you get is this the answer that you got blue tt yellow billiards carom green squash red badminton pink and chess white yes now let's look at the questions that follow so give me the answers for these questions I'm just writing this down here so that it's easier for us to answer the questions. Yes. Which of the following games is kept in box number 5? This was the final answer that we got. 5 is billiards. Which of the following games is covered in white paper? Which is covered in white paper? Chess is covered in white paper. How many games are arranged between badminton and the box covered with yellow paper? How many games are arranged between badminton Uh, and the box covered with yellow yellow is here badminton is here so how many boxes are there in between two boxes are there which of the following games is kept just below squash just below squash is badminton in which of the following box number is carom kept carom is kept in box number 4 so all of you have got the answer correctly for this one good uh, now i think we'll move on to the next question the next question is again on data sufficiency so try it out Among Gautam, Harish, Sona, Tony, and Mooni, is Sona smaller than Tony? So try this and give me the answer. So what does the first statement say here? Both the not more than uh, two beats. Maximum allowed is two, not more than that, right? Whatever we have done is not more than two, right? So it's correct. It's fine. Among Gautam, Harish, Sona, Tony, and Mooni, is Sona smaller than Tony? Okay. Harish is either greater than or equal to. So, what is given in the first statement? The first statement says, Harish is either greater than or equal to Sona, who is either smaller than or equal to Gautam. So, Sona is smaller than or equal to Gautam. Gautam is greater than Tony, who is equal to Moni. This is what is given in the first statement. So. basically i have to find out the relationship between s and t using this i cannot say what is the relationship between s and t correct s is less than or equal to g greater than t using this can i say what is the relationship between s and t no i cannot so using statement 1 alone i am not able to arrive at the answer now let us look at the second statement what is given gautam is greater than sona and either smaller than or equal to harish so gautam is either smaller than or equal to Harish, who is equal to Tony, and Moni is greater than, and Moni is greater than Tony, or Tony is lesser than Moni. Right? This is what is given. So basically, what is given here? This is given, and I know G is greater than S. So I am combining. Right? See, whatever was given, I am just combining it and writing it together. So this is what I have. So using the second statement, what can I say? i can say that i can find out the relationship between s and t right very clearly i can say t is greater than s or i can say sony is smaller than tony right so among the following i have to find the relationship is sony smaller than tony yes using the second statement i can say that sony is smaller than tony so using the second statement i am able to arrive at the answer right now look at the third statement what is given in the third statement sona is either greater than or equal to gautam who is equal to tony harish is smaller than gautam who is equal to moni so again here i have to find the relationship between uh, sona and tony that's all right so at this part itself i am getting the answer i know for sure s is greater than or equal to t or what is the question here is sona smaller than tony definitely not sona is not smaller than tony she is either equal to tony or greater than tony so this is basically a yes or no type of question but framed in a little different way correct so using the second statement i can clearly say that sona is smaller than tony using the third statement i can very clearly say that sona is not smaller than tony see what is the question the question is is sona smaller than tony correct so you are getting an answer to that either a yes or a no so what will be your answer here either using statement 2 you can arrive at the answer or using statement 3 you can arrive at the answer so your answer will be uh, either 2 or 3 alone is sufficient to 
arrive at the answer that is option B correct if data in either statement 2 alone or statement 3 alone is sufficient option B see for such questions no yes or no questions what you have to keep in mind is that either the uh, is soda uh, taller than Tony either my answer should be yes or it should be no I cannot say uh, I am not sure that means that is not enough to arrive at the answer if I am able to give an answer like yes he is smaller than Tony or no he is not smaller than Tony that is enough okay in the third statement it is given sona is greater than or equal to tony which very clearly means that sona is not smaller than tony so when i when i am asking you is sona smaller than tony no she is not smaller than tony she is either equal to tony or greater than tony right i hope it is clear now so let's move on to the next question uh, the next question is there on your screen which of the following should replace the question mark so that C greater than D is definitely true? See, C has to be greater than D means what should come? Very easy this is. Greater than, correct? So here C is equal to B. B should be greater than A, greater than or equal to D. Only if greater than symbol comes here, then only I know for sure that C is greater than D is option B. will be your answer. So there is one more puzzle. Try this and with that we will end the session. So try this set. There are 12 people M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W and X sitting in three rows such that four people are there in each row. All of them are facing north. Row 1 is in front of row 2 and row 2 is in front of row 3. So how are the people sitting? There are three rows. 1, 2, 3. Okay. And uh, this is row 1, row 2 and row 3 and it is given this row has politicians okay so row 1 has all politicians and row 2 has engineers this is engineers and these are doctors that's what is given row 3 has doctors so there are four people in each row everybody is facing north correct that north means upwards that is what is given here now what is uh, given first I am just starting, if you are still trying, you can continue trying. V sits in the left corner in the third row. So where is V? V is sitting here. This is the left, this is the left and this is the right because everybody is facing upwards. Na? So this is left and this is right. So V is sitting in the left corner in the third row. Okay. Q sits in front of, so I have used this statement now. Q sits in front of U who is next to N. So, I do not know how to fix that. Let that be there. P is sitting to the immediate right of T and both of them are politicians. So, if this is T, this will be P and they are going to be in this line, first line, but I do not know where. Okay, I am just writing that down there. Uh, P is sitting to the immediate right of T and both of them are. Okay, so Nageshwar has finished doing it. Good. S is a doctor and he is on the second seat from the right in the row. So, S is a doctor and he is on the second seat from the right in the row. Uh, X sits behind W and they sit on the right corners of the respective rows. So, X is sitting behind W. So, if this is W, this is X. But there is one more possibility that comes up here, right? W can be here and this can be X. So, we have to consider both the possibilities, correct? So, what did we fix? We got this is V. S. Okay, so one possibility was W X is coming here. The other possibility is this is W and this is X. It is given X sits behind W and they sit on the right corners of the respective rows. R sits on the left corner and he is an engineer. So R is here in both of these cases. R is going to come here. M is neither in column N or U and not to the extreme left O cannot be in the corners okay let's wait let's now uh, look at the information that we have not taken see what is given here Q sits in front of U who is next to N so Q is sitting in front of U so if U is here Q will sit on top of U and adjacent to U N has to be there either N will be on this side or N will be on this side so let us try to apply this in the first case so uh, if I put U here right N has to be one of this so it's not there so obviously this cannot be u so if i put u here right if i say this is u then which is n this has to be n and if this is u and this is n then this has to be q 
correct but there is another possibility also there correct so v s x r w see here i put this is u and this is n but this can also be n and this can also be u that is another possible case correct so if this is the case this will be q okay so again here i am getting two possible cases so if this was q then this will be tp because tp has to be adjacent to each other in this case this will be tp okay so then what are we left with we are left to fix m and uh, uh, m and o now here it is given m is neither in the column n or u nor at extreme left o cannot be in the corners so uh, in this case where will o be o has to be here and this has to be m if i take this case right again this has to be o and this has to be m but this is not possible right m cannot be in the leftmost corner or this has to be o and this has to be m but again o cannot be in the corners so this is not possible this case goes wrong so but this case seems to be correct okay now if you let us try this one now now if i am so what i have i got here i have got t p q m r n u w v o s x this is one case which i seem it seems to be correct now try this case here now what is happening here so this is r x v s w now again here i will have two cases right when i have to place u and n so either this can be u this can be n so uh, this is w here correct so if this is u and this is n if this is u this has to be q it is not possible why because tp have to come here together so if i place u here and q here where can i play tp adjacent on row 1 i cannot place so obviously here this has to be n and this has to be u so if this is u this is q and so this will be tp now since this is done uh, this will be what this will be obviously o and this will be f so this also seems to be correct so you have two possible cases here correct which is satisfying all the conditions see m is neither in column n uh, or u or nor on to the extreme left o cannot be in the corner so this is also satisfied there uh, all these conditions are also satisfied right so i have two possible cases now with this i have to look at the questions and answer now what is the first question who is the immediate neighbor of the one who sits in front of o so who is the immediate neighbor of the one who sits in front of o so who is sitting in front of o n is sitting in front of o in both the cases n is sitting in front of o and who is the immediate neighbor r and u are the immediate neighbor so r and u correct you have the options the answer option is option b r second one if m is not a doctor then what is the position of n with respect to the one who sits on the extreme right of the second row if m is not a doctor if m is not a doctor means this is not the condition that we, case that we are looking at so we are going to look at this case if you look at this case what are they asking what is the position of n with respect to the one who sits on the extreme right of the second row extreme right of the second row is w what is the position of n with respect to w second to the left correct this is the left so second to the left of w is n so what will be the answer second to the left if w is a politician then who among the following represents a group of doctors so w is a politician is this case then who are the doctors v o s m are the doc where v o s m are the doctors who sits behind m if x is a doctor again x is a doctor is this case who is sitting behind m in that case w is sitting behind m four of the following are alike in a certain way and so form a group which of the following does not belong to the group q u n o let us see q u q is here u is here q is here u is here no n no okay they are in basically two different rows p x r v where is p x p is here x is here r is here v is here r is here v is here p x basically uh, the two people are in different rows v and s when you look at v and s what's happening v and s are in the same row in all the other cases these two people are in different rows so the same row is v and s so that will be the odd one here
four of the following are alike in a certain way and so form a group which of the following does not belong to that group so the one that doesn't belong to the group is v okay is it clear so with that uh, we are coming to an end of the questions chosen for the session so any doubts in any of the questions that we solved so great so that is it uh, from us for now and i'll see you in the next session and this is gayatri signing off till then take care bye bye good night